In today's video, we are going to take anybody who has absolutely no idea how to use Roblox Studio from a total noob to a noob that kind of knows what they're doing. Welcome to the 2023 Studio Beginner Guide. Now, first things first, I should hop into an empty studio so my screen will look like yours because this might look a little complex to people who have never really opened studio before. Now, to get a Roblox Studio, you're gonna wanna hop onto Roblox and click on this Create tab. Mine's gonna look a lot different than yours, but yours should pop up with some prompts to follow that will let you download and install Studio. Once you have it downloaded, you'll see all your places listed, which will only be one, and you can either create a new one or open the one you already have. Today we're going to create a new one. So we'll just click create experience and it's going to load up studio for us. Now we've got this page. Roblox offers a good bit of templates to get you started and some of them are even scripted as well. So if you wanted to make an obstacle course, you could start with this script or with this place that has scripts or a racing game or a line runner, capture the flag, the list goes on and on. There's some from pretty bad builds to absolutely insane builds, all free for you to check out and learn how to use studio but for today we're going to keep it basic and go with the base plate now a base plate on roblox is basically just your floor like this whole gray block is a base plate and before we do absolutely anything in studio the first thing you have to do is save to roblox if you don't save it right when you get in you're risking quite a bit let's say you work for multiple hours and then it crashes or your computer restarts or for any reason this studio Studio window closes, you lose everything. So first things first, make sure to save to Roblox. It would be nice to give it a name. We're going to say Tuts just so we don't lose it. And then here we can select the creators, whether that's going to be me or any of the groups I'm in. Then we can select a genre. I don't think there's really many points to selecting a genre. I would just keep all. And guys, this here, Team Create, make sure it's checked on. This will auto save your project as you're working on it. So you don't have to worry about if you forget publishing it or something. It's gonna go ahead and restart studio a little bit and load us into the one that is saved to Roblox. Now that we're in the studio that is saved to Roblox, you'll see an asset manager tab has appeared and this is how your studio is gonna look. We can pretty much break up studio into five parts. You have your viewport, which is right here. You have your asset manager. You've got what all I'll call the toolbar your explorer and your properties these will be the parts of today's video now studio is having a weird issue right now where i can't move around as you can see my mouse is just glitching out so i'm gonna have to go into one that might have some stuff in it because roblox might be down at this time i can move stuff around and i can look around with wasd but when it comes to turning my camera it's just not working so we'll go into one of the projects i'm currently working on and just kind of fly over to the side all right here's our our new base plate guys i just kind of put a part on the ground so first things first let's get into this toolbar on the top we're on the home page here and this is pretty much every single one of these but their most important parts for example we have all of our tools to move rotate scale etc and our part spawning but we also have those in model where we can get more in depth on each of these things for today we're just going to focus on this home tab now the first thing you're probably going to know how to do in studio is move around so you can use WASD to fly in whatever direction just like you're playing a game on your computer and then you can use your right mouse click to look around with your camera and your scroll wheel to sort of zoom in or zoom around faster to get around faster so now that we know how to move let's go over how to bring in parts right up here you're gonna see this insert menu this gives us three options UI parts and toolbox we're gonna just do a part, and if we click this drop down arrow, we can pick any of these parts, a block, sphere, wedge, corner wedge, or a cylinder. We're gonna do a block. Now, as you can see, it spawns in right down here, and we have the scale tool selected, so we can grab any of these and scale in that direction. If we hold control, we can scale them symmet symmetrically. So I don't think that's the right word, but holding control and grabbing any side does both sides. Very nice tip to have. And then we have our 
selection tool, which just lets you select a part and then move it around wherever you want. Our move tool is pretty much the same as the selection tool, except now we can snap onto axes X, Y, and Z. You can also click in the middle and use it just like the selection tool. We already went through scale and then rotate, which just lets you rotate along each set of axes. If you want to change the distance you're rotating per click or how far you're moving it per slide, I guess, you can go to this model tab and change these values here. The rest of this toolbar is barely ever used. The material manager is the way to select your materials. You can go through, just find whatever you like. And while we're clicking on this part, let's say we want it neon. We just click this little uh, mouse with a circle here. And now our part's neon. We can press control Z to undo literally anything and we could change it to whatever we want. Let's put it to fabric since I made a video about how bad fabric is. <laughs> That's the material manager. Now, if you didn't find the material that you were looking for in the material manager, Roblox has something called material generator. This is an AI powered material maker. So let's say we wanted a fabric because we don't like the one Roblox has. We can click generate and it's going to generate four different fabrics or whatever you type in. Now I will say I have not had much luck with this material generator. As you can see, we have uh, just not really the greatest stuff. AI is a far cry away from where it needs to be to be viable in the workplace, but there is some cool stuff you can do. Studs per tile, bring that down. And that looks a little bit better, but very, very hard like tiling. Once again, just not really great, but it is a cool thing to play around with nonetheless. And then right here, you pick the color for your brick by clicking this drop down arrow and you can pick whatever color you want. Up next, let's get into the asset manager. You'll pretty much never use this unless you're bringing meshes into your place. Like I genuinely don't think I ever touch the asset manager other than to press this one button. This is bulk import. And if you click this, it'll open your file explorer and you can bring in meshes from your computer. That's pretty much the only thing I do with the asset manager. Up next, arguably the most important part of studio, the explorer and properties. These work hand in hand. Your explorer is where everything gets stored and organized. Everything you see here is somewhere with in the game. If we click on this item and press F, it'll zoom us straight to what it is. And as you can see, it's one of the bricks on this wall. Every single thing you see in this viewport is also in the Explorer. Now the Explorer breaks itself up into multiple other categories. Your workspace is everything visual on your screen that you can move. Your lighting is the lighting of your whole space. So if we went into here and we grabbed, let's say the atmosphere and we bumped it up as you can see it changes the entire feel of the game and there's a lot you can do with lighting so definitely just play around within here any of these categories you can right click on insert an object and just play around with everything and see what you like and what you don't there's a ton of stuff and we're not going to get into all of it today now the properties tab is where you edit what you're selecting in the workspace for example let's select this mesh right here once again it's a brick we can go down here and change the brick color we could say if we want it to cast a shadow or not we could change its material double-sided is for meshes if you have flipped normals you can mark double-sided as an easy fix but it could be a bit intensive on your game so i would just go back into blender and fix it and there's so much other stuff we can adjust its reflectance its texture its transparency and so so much more guys properties is just how you affect stuff that's in the explorer i'm pretty sure that's all of the super basics about roblox studio i will go into one more thing because it is kind of nice to know and a lot of people don't really understand it it's called unions. Now, unions might have the hottest take on Roblox. Some people love them and say they don't affect your game's performance. Other people say they're horrible and they should never be used ever. I haven't done enough testing to know for sure which side of the fence I'm on, but I kind of tend to stick with the people who say don't use them. But once again, I haven't really done my own testing, so I can't be on either side of the fence fully. Anyways, think of unions as a way to make a mesh if you don't know how to use Blender. So for example, we're going to make a couch 
If we grab these two parts and we click on this one right here and then click negate, this is going to turn this selection into a negative part. Now, if we have this one and shift click on the other one, we can click union and check it out. It's going to cut out that negative part from the base part. So very quickly, we gave ourselves a pretty nice spot for a couch. And then all we have to do is add in some cushions just like this. And we have a couch. It would look a lot better if I spent time on it. But that's pretty much unions. If you ever need to go back and really edit this, you can go back up here and separate and it'll go back to how it was. Let's say you wanted the box to take up the whole thing and just cut it in half. You could then do the same process and just union it again. And now we have this shape. Unions are definitely fun, but still don't know if they're bad or okay. Still leaning towards bad. But I think that is enough information to get you started in studio. Definitely have fun with spawning in all the stuff you can and just clicking a bunch of random buttons. If you guys have any questions, I'll try my best to go through every single comment and answer them down below. And I hope to see all you guys making some pretty incredible games soon. But that is going to wrap up the video for today. If you did enjoy and you want to see more content like this, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Have a great day. Later.